Monica Crowley, former assistant treasury secretary and host of the Monica Crowley podcast, and Mark Simone, I'm going to say Hall of Fame WOR well, radio then. show host. You're nominated, nominated for the Radio Hall of nominated. Fame. Well, I'm sure you'll get it. Soon. So to make the Cudlow Hall of Fame, uh, my opening riff just seems to be the obvious. I'm being pragmatic about this. What say you? Uh, Trump, he's got, the, he's got it. He's the best campaigner out there. He's the best talker out there. He's the only candidate without question marks. Normally you think... Can this guy be president? Will he do what he says he's going to do? Trump's already proven that. He's been a president. He's been successful. DeSantis is running the worst campaign ever. Besides his public disaster side, privately it's a disaster. He's got 92 people on the campaign. Preposterous. Mm. Trump has seven. DeSantis is blown through like 15 million already and going no place. So... Uh, but people tell me he won't drop out. He'll just stay there till the end. Okay, uh, you have been a strong Trump supporter all along. Uh, you have been proven right thus far. I want to ask you a question that before I get to Monica. You can take a whack at the... By the way, you're all in pink today. I love this. The dress, the tie, the whole nine yards. Uh, what about Mr. Trump's legal woes? That's what people say. People say to me, yes, yes, we like him on the issues. Absolutely. We know he did a good job. But what about the legal woes, Mark Simone? I don't think there's anybody, even a fair independents, who think he's actually guilty of anything. He's been overcharged like crazy. Even this uh, crazy Jack Smith stuff, 37 counts. They're all repetitive counts. Nobody's buying this. The documents. Uh... The documents stuff. Anytime they do this stuff, Trump goes up in the polls. Trump's legal woes, Monica. I know you're not a lawyer. I don't think you're a lawyer. No, right? I'm, no I'm you're not, not a lawyer. No. Uh, you were just the assistant secretary, but not for law. Now, Trump's legal woes. Seriously, yes. is yes. that an impediment to his ultimate victory? Beating Biden, as Newt said, is the most important thing, beating Biden. Well, right I, now, Trump looks like the best guy to do it, but and, what about his legal woes? Absolute, look, for all intents and purposes, this Republican primary is over. Donald Trump is running 40 points ahead, his nearest competitor, Governor DeSantis. The other candidates, while they're nice people, they have completely fallen apart um, in terms of running their campaign. And look, Trump has two things. One, to Mark's point, he now has a presidential record of real economic achievement, plus the border ending our engagement in foreign uh, interventions and wars. He's got a long record of achievement to stand on and run on and project into a second term. The other thing that Donald Trump has that no other candidate can come close to matching is an emotional bond with the voters. Mm. Emotional, not political, not intellectual, emotional. That is unbreakable and is why unsurmountable. Is that? How and that's is that? why, to your why, question... Why is that? To, to, stay to your with the question, though, Larry, bond. that's what's kicking in with all of these indictments, because people are looking at this as a huge pile-on on Donald Trump. It's not one count that people might say, well, maybe he did something wrong. No, these are hundreds of counts that are absolutely ridiculous. He has been confronting the deep state now for years and stared them down and has won at every turn. They will not stop until the man is in prison. So I think all of these other Republican candidates are running to be the default candidate in case there is some, some mm -hmm. move to put Donald Trump in prison. But I'm telling you right now that Trump is going to walk away with this nomination absent that because of that emotional Mark lock. Simone, the emotional bond is, I think, to some extent, comes from the feeling that People see Trump as a fighter. He won't quit. He won't give up. They've thrown the book at him. I mean, literally, Biden wants to put him in jail for 400 years so he doesn't run against him for president. Is that what it is? Is it Trump's fighting spirit? I mean, Trump is a wealthy, successful businessman, which in my book is terrific. But he is also from Queens, a strong, tough guy. And I think that ethos kind of still comes out even after these many years. Uh, it's actually two things. One, he is the toughest guy in the world. Uh, you know, if we have a problem, we can't sleep at night. This guy, I don't care how much trouble he has, doesn't even blink, doesn't flinch. Toughest guy in the world, never quits, fights through everything. There's another side to him. He's the nicest man in the world. Now, to some, that might sound a little crazy, but you walk around with him yeah. in Trump Tower. He, yeah. he knows every tenant. He knows every doorman. He knows the name of their kids. He's a really nice guy in real we, life. We can attest to that. Yeah. He, he really no, is. no, there's but a gracious, want... charming yeah. side to him of those that know him well and privately. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily come out, but it's absolutely there. Um, I just want to, I, I want to have some fun. He, he's, he told uh, my great pal Maria over the weekend in a good interview, um, 
there's a vice president, there may be a vice president and some cabinet officers in the group running for the campaign. I want to give you each a whack at that. Mark <laughs> Simone, go ahead. Is there a vice president in there, Mark Simone? Yeah, yeah. When well, you get in this uh, thing, you want to impress people and elevate your status. Ramaswamy has clearly done that. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed cabinet post. Tim Scott, I know Donald Trump has privately looked at him as a vice presidential mm -hmm. choice. I think he's impressed people. He's definitely in the cabinet. Uh, Chris Christie, you'll never see again. Totally <laughs> right. Uh, right. Mike Pence is a lovely guy, but I don't think he wants to go back as a, as a cabinet member or a number two. Actually, Pence would be a good cabinet member Excellent. if such a thing were possible. Monica, I, I think, you see a vice president in that group? I, I, well, I'm not entirely sure. I think uh, the, the field is bigger, uh -huh. and I think President Trump is looking at a bigger field. He's looking at some You women, see cabinet members? Yeah, I do, but I think Trump's calculation going forward when he is reelected, not if, but when he's reelected, is going to be loyalty first because he got so burned in the first term by so many people who turned their back on him, stabbed him in the back, were disloyal, were not on the America First agenda, that I think his first criteria will be loyalty, and then secondly, America First, third, can you deliver me a state and or a constituency like suburban women or the state of Pennsylvania or something? I think it's it is a very uh, sophisticated calculation that he's going into. By this the way, with. you have to agree with him on the issues. I mean, oh, you have to agree uh, with him that, on the that policies. Goes without that saying. is and, really you know, important. To, to your point, I mean, in Larry, a policy about job fighting, in that uh, first term, very important. Even if you disagree, there are always internal disagreements on policy, as you know. Yes. But. Once the boss makes a decision, you got to rally around him. If you can't, you have to resign, and so forth and so on. Absolutely. But basically, and I think a lot of people in the first term forgot about that, and that's most or, unfortunate. Or put it aside. And to your point, and your point, Mark, about Trump being a fighter, people do like that. But the point is, what is he fighting for, and whom is he fighting for? He is fighting for the forgotten men and women in this country. That's why you have that emotional bond with Donald Trump, because he took all these slings and arrows and continues to do so for the last eight years for you and me. And the and everybody in America who supports him wants to make it up to him, know, and they can't wait to vote for him again. He hardly mentions, this is interesting, his grievances versus the people's grievances. He is running now pretty much almost 100% on the people's grievances. Have you noticed? He barely mentioned the 2020 race. He actually doesn't talk that much about his legal issues either. He's mostly solid issues, pro-growth, stuck with the border, no more wars. You think I'm right that the GOP basically doesn't want to see a protracted, financed Ukraine war? I think you, uh, you can't tricky, have another Vietnam. That went on. Question. Vietnam went on forever. We already have 50,000 dead in this war. Uh, you can't let it go to 100. But you don't mean, but there's not, there's no American boys and girls dead in this war. No, uh, but there's 50,000 dead over there. B B Vietnam was 53,000 some odd, yeah. uh, a tragedy, um, which we gave in on. But I'm just saying, at this point, it's a matter of financing and the threat that, I mean, I don't know, Biden called up reservists. Nobody knows quite what that means. But do you think I'm right that the, the locus of the GOP is turning more towards Trump let's make a peace deal rather than Joe Biden's war in effect. Yeah, because as, uh, as in Vietnam, we see that nobody's going to win this. This will drag on forever. You'll end up with another 50,000 dead over there. You can't have it. And unfortunately, we've got the world's worst negotiator in the White House. The second worst is Secretary of State. So I don't know who's going to settle. The third this. worst is John Kerry. But we have his own segment on the show tonight. <laughs> Monica Crowley, thank you very much. Mark Simone, I know you'd like to stay for this Kerry segment. We'll have you back.